Africa for greeting the saints as you would uh, call in and greet and say hello. We're so appreciative for you joining with us tonight to uh, all of the listeners. Uh, greeting to you, Bishop Miller, and your wife and family there. We thank God for you all. And the entire body, fellowship of pastors and churches, um, thank you so much for uh, your participation in serving the Lord by serving others. I want to thank God for the ministerial staff of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church and the end-time membership of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church. We're so grateful and privileged and honored to greet you tonight in the name of the Lord. I uh, want to thank you for your prayers that uh, and your support for allowing us to uh, be a blessing to Bishop Lewis uh, last few days uh, on their month and a half mission trip, and he desired to come by and rest a few days with us, and we are so privileged to have them in our home, in our midst, uh, during this time. It, it is a beautiful thing to have the gift of hospitality, how we entertain not only unaware, but we entertain angels of the Lord aware that we are doing this. So thank you so much. Uh, we're going to go into a Bible study tonight. I feel strongly that God has laid this on my heart tonight, and I would encourage you again in all of the Bible studies that we teach. Uh, we've been encouraged you over the years. It is better to get a short pencil uh, with a piece of paper and jot down little rhema word that God will give you through your hearing spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit has to say, because I assure you, you cannot remember it. Uh, so it's best to jot it down and look back on it. During this time, uh, we're remembering those that are in the Florida area during this time of hurricane and displacement of home and family. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for safety. We thank you for calming the storm, speaking to the wind, and, and it obey. And we thank you for uh, covering them. We ask that uh, that it don't be uh, too much of structural damage and home displaced and destroyed. And also we pray that through the government bodies, that hopefully you can touch those that are in high places, that they can work together in harmony and work together for the betterment of the peoples without dealing with parties, uh, plain politics. And But they would do what it takes to show themselves godly enough to lay down their agenda and work together for the betterment of the people. And God, because we are stronger and better together. Mm -hmm. And we pray that you will bless us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, with that amen. said, uh, let's get ready to go into a Bible study. It won't be long. Uh, I won't hold you long. I'm so grateful that uh, you that are in different time zones, we are being respectable of that, as well as those that are here local that have to uh, work and get up early in the morning to go to work. So let's jump right into what I uh, know that God has laid on my heart, and it's just very simple. I was thinking on uh, yesterday and today uh, what could I say to God's people to encourage them, and the word just kept coming to me, thank you. It's a wonderful thing to give thanks. It's so wonderful to give thanks until the Bible declare and decree that we do it from First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter five. Uh, jot that down and go back and study, please. If you accept uh, the teaching of your pastor and the teaching of the preachers and, and abide by it, I promise you, you will grow therein. So, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and verse 18. We would 
try to uh, slow down just a tad so you get opportunity to jot down the notes and 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 go at a pace where you can hear. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse sixteen through verse eighteen, and it reads, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When I obeyed and went to the scripture with the uh, move of the Holy Ghost on my heart to encourage the saints tonight uh, to give thanks. And you notice the 18th verse say, in everything give thanks, for this is the will. Many times we ask, have thy will or your will, Lord. But sometimes we don't understand what his will is. So his will tonight in this particular scripture and teaching, it is his will that we give thanks. For it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Wow. God has us on our mind when we give thanks to God for all things. Even when we can't rejoice, we should give thanks. Even when we're not feeling our best, we should give thanks. Even when things are not going right, we should give thanks because this is his will, not whether how we feel, not whether we are on, on the mountain or in the valley, but it is his will that we give God thanks because it is concerning us. He have us in mind. So it is encouraging now in the times that we're in is that we not assume uh, my, as well as the preachers, I think they would be very agreeable with me, but especially the pastors, if you're on tonight, and my assignment, if you will, as pastors, is the same assignment that he gave to me as he gave to Jeremiah. And that is from Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And many of you know this scripture by heart, but uh, sometimes we just need to slow down when we're being taught ministered to by the pastor, and many times we will get uh, maybe miss what God has for us because there are times that the God won't give the pastor something to make you jump and shout and run. The pastor's greatest responsibility, according to Jeremiah 3 and 15, as God has shared with him, he shared with me and still require that from pastors. It's that I will give pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And listeners, tonight it is necessary in the time that we're in with all of the things we're giving God thanks for how he blessed us, homes, cars, job, income, financial stability, where we, we can live in our comfortable home, we can drive our nice cars, we don't sleep on the bridges, we're not starving, we, don't, we, we, we're, we know exactly where our next meal is coming from. We can even choose what we desire to eat, and what we don't want to eat. So we have a lot to be thankful for, but the feeding here that God required from the pastor then and now, that we would feed you with knowledge and understanding. Glory be to God. 
And when we look at the the biblical and Webster definition of knowledge, it is dealing with facts. Glory be to God. We we just can't give you something to hype you up or what we assume and our emotion and and our intellect or or our own personal uh word that we think it ought to be. But knowledge is a requirement from God to the pastor that he feed his people. And you know, we're living in time with the choice that we can make the decision now with so much that we can decide even with the platform of a mere sit before us, we can say, I don't want that. I, I, I don't have a taste for that. I want such and such. But in my coming up as a lad and a young boy, we had to eat what was set on the table and what was fixed. We, we, we didn't have the privilege to say, I don't want that. Lord have mercy. If it was collard greens, if it was black eyed peas, and, 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 and if it was uh, chicken necks or uh, rice and gravy, we had to eat what was set before us with the knowledge knowing that our father and our parents did the best and gave us the best that they could give us. So our same father now, tonight teaching Jeremiah saying, we're to be fed with knowledge and understanding. And knowledge, my sisters and brothers, is facts. Mm -hmm. And there's not but one true fact, and that's the Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible is not a fairy tale. It is not uh, just something that we read. It is full of facts. Glory be to God. It's full of knowledge. And not only facts, this, this is not my teaching, but it's leading up to my introduction. But it's full of information. Glory be to God. And God gives this to the preachers or to the pastor what to feed his people with. And it is to be dealt with, with facts and information. And the reason we can do this as preachers and pastors, because we're obedient to God, because we have had our own personal experience. Glory be to God. It is difficult. It is difficult to be fed by pastors and preachers that has no experience. Just just saying something but can't live it. Saying something and can't be an example of what we're saying. The fact is that we can be an example because we have experienced an encounter with God. We've experienced his calling. Even when we didn't want to do it like Jeremiah, we get to the place we have to deal with people that may not want to eat and they refuse to eat. Jeremiah shut down one time and decided that what's the use feeding people, fixing a good meal, and they won't eat it. But he decided, I'm not, I'm not going to do it anymore. But then he had an encounter with God. And Jeremiah cried out, it's like, fire. Hmm. Somebody ought to say or jot down right there on mute hmm. with your pencil and say, ah, glory be to God, hallelujah. And I think this teaching tonight, I hope that I can fire up, mm. glory be to God. With all what's going on, we need to be fired up, mm. glory be to God. Uh, Bishop Miller, you never had this opportunity, but I remember growing up, we had to use fireplaces with wood on it. And it start dying down a little bit. And Daddy would tell us to uh, poke the fire. Mm -hmm. And we'd take the fire poke and, and push the wood around, and it would fire up, my God. Mm -hmm. And what looked like was not going to get in the heat once we fired it up. Mm -hmm. 
it began to burn. And that's what the saints need tonight. As never before, we need to be fired up. Glory be to God. And 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 that's what knowledge does. It deals with facts and information through experience. And then God wants us to feed and eat understanding. You know the Bible says in the New Testament, out of all you're getting, get on this. It is necessary in the days that we in that we have biblical knowledge from the God's preachers and God pastors that we would have understanding. It is detrimental to us trying to do things, serve the Lord, minister for the Lord, and don't have understanding. So understanding according to the Bible and Webster is the ability to understand. You know, you, you ever talk with people, we would think that they don't have a high IQ or they keep messing up, but really they're giving their best, but they don't understand what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. So I remember Sister Morgan teaching the girls growing up how to make bed, and naturally I, I do some bed making myself more now than ever because I've learned how to love my wife like Christ loved the church. Mm. But I try, I try, I try, I try to make the bed like Sister Morgan make it, but I can't do it. But I understand enough how she wants it. That's the same way it is with God. I try and try, but I can't do it like God can do. So I've tried my best with understanding to let God do it through me, that he would be pleased with it. And not only the ability to understand, but the ability to comprehend, to be aware of others. Feeling. My God. So it brings us tonight to give thanks in all things. I thank the preachers. I thank Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Church family, and all of those that show so much love to me and Sister Morgan. You give. You you seed in us. You 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 give donation to us. You give love offering to us. I thank you because it is the will of God concerning you. And and the attitude that you give in with understanding, I encourage you not to let nobody causing you not to do the things to please God. And giving thanks is a not only what Jeremiah say, but it is an expression of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Somebody jot down gratitude. And you need to biblically and Webster Look these words up. That's what study does. It causes you to look words up. My God. And and it helps the pastor to know that if you study, you're eating. Glory be to God. And if you eat nourishment food, you gonna grow. Grow glory. You gonna grow. So it is an expression of gratitude or appreciation. Lord have mercy. When we show the expression of giving thanks, we express gratitude and we express appreciation. You know, that's one of the things we're dealing with from the political realm to the social realm and sometimes even in the church realm. And Lord help us even in our home family realm. We are so unappreciative. There are many that are so unappreciative. My God. So it is necessary that when we give thanks, we're showing expression of gratitude, appreciation, or acknowledgement. And so in showing this appreciation, what the will of God is, we get the return of one of the fruit 
of the Spirit, mm-hmm. kindness. <laughs> Hallelujah. You cannot, one cannot give thanks and everything under the will of God and have a bad attitude. You, you, you just cannot give thanks, be it monetary or appreciation or gratitude or acknowledgement in the will of God concerning us, and we do it with a bad attitude. And when we do it with a good attitude, then we get to return to bear the fruit, one of the fruit of the Spirit, kindness. It's a wonderful thing to be kind to one another and to those that we show thanks and kindness to. And also, you could say with my experience and probably yours also, when you show kindness and 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 show gratitude and appreciation, it causes you to be friendly and generously and considerate. My God. In other words, when you're considerate, you're being careful. You know, we're living in a time where people just say what they want to say. They do what they want to do and not considering their very sisters and brothers' feelings. But we can't do that if we do it to the glory of God, the will of God, that would cause us to rejoice and pray without ceasing. So it brings us tonight, and we're soon closing. You have to be reminded, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and the listeners tonight, when we do things God's way, even when we show kindness and and gratitude to some people, there's a possibility we won't even be appreciated for it. When you do nice things for people, some people, and you're doing it for the will of God, to please God, sometimes people don't even appreciate it. So any time you got to be reminded, any time we do things for God and live godly lives and give as unto the Lord, it will cause us sometimes persecution. Sometimes the very people you try the most and go the extra mile, sometimes that's where you receive sometimes the most persecution. But knowing God is pleased showing us and motivating us through our thanksgiving, through rejoicing, through praying without ceasing, what he does since it's his will concerning us, he give us strength, encouragement, the Bible, and motivation to keep living holy. Oh, my sister and brother, just because people are not kind to you, don't stop living holy. Just because people don't understand your giving, supporting ministries, supporting your pastor, being kind to people, don't let people cause you to stop living holy. So the question could be asked, Why should we give thanks to God in all things? Because we give thanks for all things, for all blessings, and it also shows that, again, gratitude can lead to a better relationship with God. Hallelujah. If you find yourself not having as a saint, a believer, 
a born-again believer, a testifying saint, pastor, preacher, if you find yourself and your relationship with God is not good, you need to you 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 need to check it out. Because when we do these things, even as giving thanks and all things, which is the will of God concerning us, it's going to better our relationship with God. Oh, who would not want a better, I didn't say you didn't have a relationship, but who having a relationship would not want a better relationship with God. And and I believe it's impossible. This is just my belief. I believe it's impossible with the experience I have and had with the Lord. It is impossible to have a relationship with God and still be arrogant. A relationship with God as saints supposed to cause you to be humble. A relationship, a better relationship with God will cause you to honor. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and I, I encourage us tonight as I feed you that you will eat. We're living in a time where many of us in the body of Christ done strayed away from honoring one another, even those that have rulers over you. And the Bible specifically tells us how we ought to honor one another. So my sisters and brothers tonight, it is almost to me impossible to have a relationship with a better relationship with God and walk in disobedience. Oh, my God. So I encourage you tonight to show the spirit of gratitude that would lead us as saints, preachers, pastors, to a better relationship with God. Somebody jot down better. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As we read the Bible as saints, it should make us better. As we pray without ceasing, it should make us better. Glory be to God. Oh, my God. But we live in a time that we look around in the community, television, televangelists, preaching that's going to look like we're getting worse. But we're naming the name of Christ. We're preaching the gospel of Christ, but we're not getting better. Our relationship is becoming tainted because we're trying to mix the word with the world. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And they do not mix if we want a better relationship with God. For well, he have told us, be in the world, but not of the world. If we become of the world, the things of the world, catering to the carnality, the flesh in us, it will weaken our relationship with God. When we as saints give generously and sincerely, it's not because God needs anything. You know, giving is showing thankfulness to God now. Because the Bible says we should give as unto the Lord. When you bless your pastor or you bless someone through giving, seeding, financial prayer, whatever you do in giving thanks or giving, it is as though you're giving it to the Lord. My God. And when we do that, we're not doing it because God needs anything. We're talking about a God got everything. But this is his way of giving us many things. Glory be to God. You know, the Bible says if you 
You give sparingly, you reap sparingly. You give graciously, you reap graciously. But if you give bountifully, <laughs> somebody ought to jot down bountifully. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. When you give bountifully, my God, not only do you receive bountifully, but there's a God that will rebuke the devil off your inheritance, rebuke the devil off your return. Hallelujah. So we want to show how much we love God, not that he need anything, but because he want to show, we want to show our love for God. When you give and pray without ceasing and 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 give thanks and show appreciation and show gratitude and endure persecution, hallelujah, and continue to do those things that please God, my God, that motivate us to continue to live holy, my God, and and holiness or holy is a lifestyle, and it really. Show God how much we love him. You know, I know we tell different one, our children, our wife, our pastor, and many others, oh, how much I really love you. But if we really mean it, glory be to God, hallelujah. You're saying now, this how much I love God. The way I love you, I'm saying I love God more. Oh, my God. If we love anything or anybody more than we love God, oh, my God, we got to be careful. So when I or we say I love you, we are saying this is how much I love God. Glory be to God. I want to share five little nuggets, and we're closing. Uh, Get ready to jot them down. And also, giving is an expression. Watch this now. Giving is an expression of obedience. (laughs) You know, sometimes we make a pledge to uh, give. uh, We say to ourselves in God, God, I'm going to give this. And then uh, we were causing ourselves to renege from what we agreed to God that we would do. You know, we agreed to do something, and that agreement is made between me and God. I'm supposed to be obedient to that. So giving thanks and giving is an expression. Oh, my God, I I, I just feel that, Lord, have mercy. I feel the praise and the worship that strengthened me tonight. Glory, because we had the privilege, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church family, we had the privilege these last few days to show thanksgiving that please God how we serve the man, the woman, and the family of God that have been away from their home church on the mission field for a month and a half, and all they wanted from Bishop Morgan and Sister Morgan was to come rest. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Just to come rest. They didn't come asking for nothing else. Didn't come asking for no finance. Didn't come asking for nothing but a place to rest and recuperate and rest and relax. And as they rest and relax, my God, they blessed the city. They blessed Montgomery. They bought items to take back home to the church family, to the children, to the orphanage. And one may say, how did they bless Prattville, Otoke County, Montgomery? Because what they purchased, they paid tax on it. Glory. All right, let me move on. So they paid tax that will help support our highways, our streets, our garbage collector, and the list goes on. They made a deposit. Glory be to God. So it gives an expression of obedience. Glory be to God. And it causes us to increase our trust in God. And it also increases our joy. Glory be to God. Somebody say joy. joy. It increases our joy. 
the Lord gave me several years ago the definition of joy from the Bible. It's there. Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. <laughs> oh, if you hadn't experienced that, you ought to try it. Put Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. It will give you joy. Glory be to you. It will keep you from being selfish. Glory. It will keep you humble. But when you begin to put Jesus first and others second yourself last, there's a possibility that persecution will come. My God. But as long as it pleased God, then he will motivate you to keep on living holy. My God. Sometimes giving, saints can give, and sometimes they'll get persecution right from their home, right from a spouse. If the wife is obeying God and giving, the husband may not appreciate that. He may say it's too much. <laughs> you, you, you know, you know the uh, uh, the show game show come on uh, where uh, Price is Right. We have a list of items, and 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 uh, he would ask you to choose a price, and when you find the right price, in between and not go over it, you shout out, that's too much, Glory, and you stop. So sometimes people will talk you out of your joy, Glory, that God will increase for you for being obedient in your giving. And sometimes people say, that's too much. But how much is too much when we're giving as unto the Lord? Glory be to God. How much is too much when we pray without ceasing? How much is too much when we live, live holy? How much is too much when we love in spite of? How much is too much when we please God? Hallelujah. And not only do it build up our trust, it increase our joy. And God sees those who worship him through giving thanks. God see those. Giving ain't just something that we do. Giving is a worship. Glory be to Anything you do give as unto the Lord, it is a worship. Glory be to God. And I close with these. Giving thanks, number one, giving thanks as unto the Lord makes you feel happy. <laughs> You've you experienced that, Sister Morgan? Amen. It'll make you feel happy. Glory be to God. My God. Giving thanks unto the Lord makes you feel happy. That's number one. Number one again, giving as unto the Lord make you feel happy. Give him 15 minutes, if you will. Time and prayer alone with nobody but God. It, it don't, you don't have to fast 21 days, 15 minutes a day, five minutes a day. Glory be to God. Time with God. I assure you, you'll come out feeling happy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My God. Try reading uh, a chapter, several verses of that chapter. Every morning, I promise you, time in the Bible with God, five minutes, five, cha five verses of a chapter, you will feel happy. Glory be to God. How do you know, Bishop? I remind you what I said earlier. I have experienced it. Glory be to God. And I can feed you with this because I have experienced it. I have understanding. And I have knowledge, and I want you to have it. Glory be to God. And there's only one place you can get it from, and that's through the eating, feasting of the word. Number two, giving thanks is good for your health. My God, scientists, medical science have proven that when you give thanks, you're healthy, you won't be depressed, 
my God, and you will not be stressed out, my God. You know, it's a danger thing that stress, medical science, stress will cause you to have a heart attack. Mm. Glory be to God. Stress can cause you to have a stroke. Mm. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So to avoid that stress, we need to give thanks. My God. Number three, giving thanks. Help you connect to people by showing love. Oh, my God. When you give to someone, it connects you, and I promise you that relationship, even with the person you give, will connect you. Showing love. You know, we connect with Bishop Lewis. We connect with Bishop Brady. We connect with the Fellowship of Pastors Churches. We have sown into their ministry. And it has connected us. Glory. We obey God. And if God speak to me and I'm obedient to that, do thus and thus, my God. And I do that. It connect me. If Bishop Lewis spent over a month in Africa, my God, we sold into the ministry. He didn't just dig well then give fresh running water. We was a part of that, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you gave and gave generously without grudging as unto the Lord, you should be happy that we was a part of Africa, people sitting on the ground. Lord, have mercy, glory be. A dusty ground. Their skin looked dusty. And now they're getting fresh water from a well. Or if that don't bring you happy, I don't know what will. So number four, giving thanks. Invoke, again, gratitude with a good attitude, Lord, have it. I got so happy, and I'm happier. Writing these notes down as the Spirit and the Word spoke to me, I am happier now because I have experienced this. I've had to eat this from my founding bishop, from other preachers, pastors. I've had to eat this, even when I didn't understand it. It was bitter in my mouth, but I swallowed on down with a, with a good attitude. It became sweet as a honeycomb in my belly. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Everything that don't taste good may be the best thing you need. Hallelujah. Never cared that much for broccoli. But when I read and found out how important broccoli is to my body, oh, I enjoy eating broccoli. Glory be to God. When I found out how much the word of God is to my spirit, man. Oh, I enjoy eating the word of God. Hallelujah. Number four, giving thanks, invoke gratitude with a good attitude. Oh, thanks. Isn't it a good spiritual feeling to do things as unto the Lord with a good attitude? Glory be to God. My God. Number five in closing, giving thanks, it becomes contagious. Other people are catching. <laughs> they may not get it at first, glory. They may not understand it at first. They, they may not know it's the will of God at first, but keep on giving, keep on living, keep on praising, keep on serving, keep on walking in obedience. Keep on honoring. Keep on being humble. My God. And it'll become contagious. My God. Hallelujah. You know, uh, we 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 run from COVID nineteen. We covered ourselves, protect ourselves, glory be because we didn't want to catch it. We didn't want it. And I don't blame you, I didn't either. I got it, but I didn't want it. But thanks be to God. Over the years, I can look back now through this teaching. 
that I prayed without ceasing. I gave with a good attitude. I gave as unto the Lord because it was the will of God and all he covered me and my family. Don't tell me I'm not happy. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. And here, it's contagious. Try it. Don't run from it. Go catch it. I would invite you tonight, if you don't have it, catch the spirit of giving. Catch the spirit of thanksgiving. Bless somebody that the Lord will lay in your heart. Never say it's too much. God will never ask you to do something that you can do. He will always ask you to do that you can't do. He will never ask you to do something that you feel good in giving. He will ask you to do something that calls for a sacrifice. And sacrifice hurts, glory, when you become a living sacrifice. It hurts. Glory be to God. The Lord speak to you to give a good sacrificial offering or, 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 or spend an extra hour sacrificing in prayer. It hurts. Glory be to God. You got to really endure to spend time with God. Fifteen minutes, ten minutes. The flesh hurt if you spend time with God like that. But, oh, we can watch a three-hour movie. I'm not being ugly. We can watch four quarters of a football game. My, we can cheer for the Buffalo Bear. We can cheer for Tampa Bay. We can cheer for Tennessee. We can cheer, and the list goes on. But we give out for five-minute prayer. <laughs> oh, God. And then we expect God. To make us strong, but you gotta eat. Glory be to God. You gotta be fed according to God's heart. Feed you with knowledge and understanding. And we thank you so much tonight for your love. Please do not feel, allow yourself to think that your pastor, glory be to God, is being too hard on you. Do not dishonor your pastor. Please hear me as I close. Do not dishonor your pastor. Do not dishonor one another because when you do it, you're dishonoring God. And some of you don't understand that. Don't speak negative towards your pastor and one another because you're speaking negative toward God. If something you don't understand, go to God and ask him to open up your understanding. He'll do it. Any man that lacking wisdom, go to God. He gives to all liberally. One pastor, one preacher, one saint does not have all the wisdom if it comes from God. Glory be to God. So we encourage us tonight to the glory of God. Bishop Miller, we're closing. If you're still on with you. Have words and close it with prayer, please. Pray for those, again, in Florida, bereaved family, and those that are going through it for the saints of God all over the world. Well, Bishop First Lady, God bless you, first of all, saints, and such a wonderful word tonight. I tell you, it was really meat for my soul. Some things we just get words, but sometimes we get the meat and the just you know, of the word, and that was for me, and I appreciate the word tonight, Bishop. Now, as we go before the throne of grace tonight, let us just open up our hearts and our minds just to receive, oh, glory, hallelujah, what thus says the Holy Spirit unto the saints, unto the church, the unto the people. Glory, he's speaking, the Holy Spirit, as we see this different chaos that's going on in the world, those in Florida and those beyond, and the, 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 the foolishness that the enemy thinks that he has conquered, but God has given us power, church, that we come together, glory, hallelujah, that we come together in the power of holiness. Now, tonight, as we go into prayer, let us just think of those, even those things, the personal things in our lives that we need. Most gracious and loving God, we come holy before you tonight. First of all, thanking you, O oh God, for the food that you have fed us. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, from our bishop, O oh Father, and we thank you, O oh God, that you have laid the roadmap for us to follow. And, Father, that we stand on your promise, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. 
Now, Father, as we come together, Father, we ask that you look down upon those in Florida. As this storm, Eon, is, 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 is still in moving forward in, the, in, in Florida, oh God, we ask that you comfort the families or be a shelter in the time of the storm. And, Father, we're thanking you for right now, Father, for how you're going to carry this through, Father, that no lives, oh God, will be destroyed. Jesus. And, Father, we just ask you right now, Father, that as we lay down our heads tonight, that you just fill us with your word, oh God, and we thank you for all that you continually do. And, Father, we ask that you just bless the families that are on this line, cover them, keep them. In the precious name of the Holy Spirit, bless Bishop and First Lady. Bless my wife, O oh God, cover her, keep her, strengthen her, O oh God, to be the woman of God. You have created her to be from the foundation of the world. And Lord, we said thank you by your mighty power. In Jesus' name we say amen. 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 Tonight, thank, thank, thank you, my son. Tonight. God bless you. We God will take uh, three or four minutes and we're uh, signing off. And thank you so much. And and. Y'all have a good night and a blessed night. Good night, saints. Good night, saints. God bless.